Fossil Fuel Wednesdays. Fossil Fuel Fridays, what the heck? Well, it's Wednesday right now. Oh, well. Yeah. This I threw is, him for a loop. Yeah, it got me now. Uh, I'm Matt Hill, Night Fire Specialist. I'm here in Denver, Colorado at the uh, holiday party for every industry group in Colorado, we think, supporting a lot of, uh, what, scholarships? Oh, well, you know, we're just trying to get the whole industry together. Yeah. Right? Networking creates opportunities, creates innovation. Absolutely. Yeah. Introduce yourself. So my name is Mark Heineman. I'm an engineer at a group called Franklin Mountain Energy. And we predominantly get oil and gas out of the ground, but we're interested in producing energy for America and the world. And, and how are you going to do that, Mark? Ah, well, right now we're trying to get 50 million barrels of oil out of the ground out of southeast New Mexico. There we go. But eventually, uh, you know, we're hoping to expand to any measure of energy technologies, any number of energy technologies. So what do you see coming down the pipeline? Uh, the proverbial pipeline. Well, you know, one of my good friends told me this recently. You look at car loans for internal combustion engines because society is really moving towards electric vehicles now, right? Oh, EVs are the big thing. But banks right now are giving car loans for up to 72 months out. And it's like, 72 month car loan that's going to burn gasoline, right? Yeah. That's seven years. Seven years of... Well, so, all right, for at least seven more years, we're going to continue burning oil yeah. for gasoline. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I mean, it's, it's impactful to my career, and I think it's really helpful for humans, yeah. right? So, yeah. Thank you, Alex Epstein, for uh, giving me that book to get me started on uh, educating others, because before then, I was just beating the heads of people that didn't agree with the oil and gas narrative, and now... Together with you know Mark and many others, we we promote a narrative of more uh, energy education. Energy education, actually, um, you know the uh, Switch Energy Alliance. I'll put a plug in for them. Yeah, does a great job at this, right? Their their mission and their view is an energy educated future, right? Where they want everyone to understand the different trade offs with all the different energy technologies, and then choose the best one for themselves and for society, and. If we're realistic about it, I mean, so I'm a professional engineer and I've studied this for decades. My, my message that I tell people all the time is energy density matters. And the, if we can use fuels that are more energy dense, then your life and the lives of your family and everyone around you will be better. Yep. So that means don't use diffuse forms of energy like wind and solar. Yep. Use biofuels, then fossil fuels, then Number nuclear one, fuels, yeah. right? Meaning like, as we become more energy dense, it actually becomes better for the environment and better for the humans that we're supporting. Yeah. What uh, other groups are you involved in? Uh, tell them about your own show. Yeah, so I, I volunteer with a group called Young Professionals in Energy. Uh, I'm the chairperson for the Denver chapter. Uh, and we started a podcast to help bring together all of the different energy sectors, because really our goal in this project and in our lives is generating the best energy projects for America and the world. Meaning we want to better human lives and make the life of every other human being on the planet better by giving them access to cheap, affordable, clean, good energy, yeah. right? And so we're doing that by hosting networking events, by building educational material like webinars, podcasts, we do some speaking engagements, we've done tours of NREL, of drilling sites, of you know renewable sites, etc. Um, and we're just really trying to uh, demonstrate to society what the best solution is. I hope you all are really proud of yourself. I am. I'm, I'm honored to know you all. You're, you're arming the next generation with the ability to continue our industry. And you and I won't have, well, I won't have to worry about when I retire and step back that the next generation wasn't included in all of the growth and knowledge on how to uh, continue to pull up oil and gas out of the ground. You know, I actually really appreciate that mindset because when you talk about growth in the next generation and you think about what it's going to take for us to get off this dirt ball, you know, I tell this to people all the time. My, my dad had a quote and he was a geologist and he was a wildcatter and he went out and drilled a bunch of oil and gas wells and he did a lot of good for society. But he had a great quote that was, you know, son, I may not be smart enough to figure out how to get us off this dirt ball, but I can at least kick the can down the road long enough until someone rolls around who is. And to that, I say, dad, Fuck you. Because <laughs> I'm smart enough and we're smart enough to figure out how to get us off this dirt ball. Yeah. Elon Musk is making a big movement. I don't agree with all of his physics. He's blatantly wrong and it's very easy to disprove him in a lot of his stuff. But his, his message is correct. And that's the reason that a lot of people find merit in his message is that, hey, 
we should work to better ourselves and better our energy production sources, which is not wind and solar, but it is more energy dense fuels, which is predominantly uranium, plutonium, nuclear power. Yeah, we're, we're never opposed to alternative energies, but do the work and do the math and do the science and do the engineering to make your alternative energy. And right now, I'm sorry, it's just not solar and wind. So if you're gonna use something else to replace fossil fuels or nuclear, let us know about it. We'll, we'll be glad to help you out. There, there is no replacement, blatantly. I mean, there, it, show, me, show me the math, show me the replacement. I would love to look at the physics with anyone. I've yet to see a compelling solution. Yeah. Well, we, we hope the next generation, right? But right now, we're very well, lucky. No, the, the generation is our generation. We have that opportunity. So we're getting, in my opinion, we're leveraging fossil fuels now, right? We're using the utility of these high energy density chemical bonds to literally make our lives better, give us an easier return on, on our investment when we get the oil and gas out of the ground. We're and then really we're, gonna, we're gonna use that advantage and that leverage to move forward in the research and move forward in the technology to be able to leverage the next step. And the technology is, you know, all the problems that other people might see outside of our industry looking in, we are, we are engineering those problems out of our own industry. We have the capability and the knowledge. We are really good stewards of energy. We want to make it the most efficient. Any waste at all, any pollution at all, we know that that's money being wasted. That's not return on investment. So we are working really hard to capture, you know, all of that back. Dude. 100%. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. How do people get a hold of you, Mark, to support you and uh, all you're doing? Uh, I'm pretty easy to find. My name is Mark Heinemann. Last name spelled just like Chinaman without the C. <laughs> I heard that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's also pronounced, a lot of people pronounce it Hinneman, and that's incorrect. It's uh, Mark Heinemann. Kind of like, hey, man, are you high? <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nah>, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. I heard that. So, that's so great. Thank you for what you do. God bless you. This is our show, everybody. This is what I do. Introduce amazing people in our industry to you and follow them, help them out. Take care. God bless everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're welcome. It's to ride to Denver in the autumn of the year. Walked in from the highway with the rain against my beard. For Denver girls and Denver talk upon my watch and chain. Then I headed out to try my luck in the Colorado rain. Found a darkened corner. Had a glass of wine Met a girl named Mary She made my head unwind While rivers of light leaped through the night She stole my heart away With the morning dawn she found me gone Thought I heard her call my name For Denver girls and Denver talk Upon my watch and chain then I headed out to try my luck in the Colorado rain. There's a rainbow on the highway, it's telling me to go. Maybe on down to New Orleans where the rain don't turn to snow. For the winter winds are bound to send the stranger on his way Just moving on, I can't stay long in the Colorado rain For Denver girls and Denver talk upon my watch and chain Then I headed out to try my luck